The OPG Company was a Canadian confectionery company founded in 1911 that produced candy until the mid-1990s. Based in London, Ontario, the company produced its first trading card sets in the 1930s, releasing several collections of baseball, gridiron football and ice hockey cards until the company was sold to Nestle in 1996. The OPG name was revived by trading card company Tops in 1997 to release hockey cards, being its licensor until 2004. Three years afterward, Upper Deck became licensor for the OPG brand, having released sets up to the present day. The OPG Gum Company got its start in 1911 when brothers John McKinnon McDermott and Duncan Hugh McDermott started to manufacture chewing gum. According to OPG literature, both brothers had been in the gum business and knew the business very well. The brothers had worked for C.R. Somerville, a gum manufacturing plant in London, Ontario. After the Somerville firm was sold to American Chickle Company in 1908 and the plant moved to Toronto, the McDermott brothers took over the box division and eventually purchased it in 1910. Shortly thereafter, they started OPG and produced their first box of gypsy gum. The name OPG is an Ojibwe word meaning Robin, as is found in the Song of Iowa by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. It also happened to be the name of McDermott's summer cottage in Grand Bend, Ontario. In terms of company genealogy, the McDermott's owned the OPG Company Limited as renamed in 1921 and Somerville Paper Box Limited until 1944. They sold Somerville Paper Box Limited to Garfield Weston in 1945 and changed their own OPG from a public company to a private company. The company was now run by John Gordon McDermott, the son and nephew of the McDermott brothers. The younger McDermott ran the company until his death in 1953 after which Frank Leahy took over the company. Leahy was the president of the OPG before he purchased the company from the McDermott estate in 1961. Leahy ran the business until his death in 1980, after which Gary Corrine stepped in and purchased the company from his wife, Mary Margaret. The sales for the first year of operation of OPG Company Limited were $177,389.84 with a profit of $4,766.92. The products manufactured were chewing gum, mints and various types of popcorn especially crackly nut. In that year, there were 30 employees in the plant and the annual payroll was $31,614.38, including management salaries and bonuses. In 1921, OPG Gum Company was sold to a trust with the intent of incorporating the company and changing its name to OPG Company Limited. Initially, it was incorporated as a public company with five shareholders and four directors all members of the McDermott family. In 1928, a manufacturing facility was built at 430 Adelaide Street in London. Initially, this plant was erected primarily to supply a substantial export gum business to the United Kingdom. From 1928 until 1989, this plant housed some of the most modern gum and candy making equipment available in the world. During the Depression years, the company operated mainly at a loss. In 1933, a licensing agreement was signed with a Buffalo firm, W. Ampersand F. Manufacturing, Colorado, who made paraffin chewing gum and novelties. This allowed OPG to sell these products in Canada as well as in Great Britain, Scotland, and Ireland. In the mid-1950s, Gurley Novelties, a candle company in Buffalo, New York, also signed with OPG, so candles could be sold in Great Britain, Scotland, Ireland, and eventually Canada. OPG sold Gurley Novelty candles under the name Gaybright and Tinseltown in Ireland and Scotland. About this time, Frank P. Leahy joined the firm as sales manager and John Gordon McDermott, the son of J.K. McDermott, also became active in the business. Trading cards were a big part of the OPG business. Their first card sets were produced in the mid-1930s. A baseball diamond, set much larger than traditional cards in 1934, five hockey sets between 1934 and 1938, a new baseball set in 1937, a Mickey Mouse set in 1935, and a Fighting Forces set in 1939. They made a few more sets in the 1940s, but it was not until the late 1950s that the company started to distribute cards on a regular basis. 
The McDermott's owned and operated both O.P.G. Company Limited and Somerville Paper Box Limited until 1944 when they sold the Somerville business to Garfield Weston. In 1945, O.P.G. Company Limited was changed from a public company to a private company. For many years, National Novelty Company was a subsidiary of O.P.G. Company acting as a retail outlet, selling candy goods over the counter, and also servicing gum vending machines in the area. With the arrival of World War II, accompanied by sugar and other commodity rationing, OPG Company existed mainly because of war contracts to supply dried egg powder to Europe and the United Kingdom. Employees, who worked at OPG during the war, recall the incident when a boat carrying a load of egg powder was sunk in the St. Lawrence River by a German submarine and the shipment had to be returned to London for repocking. During this time, the only gum product manufactured was Thrills, a product which is still being sold today. D.H. McDermott died in December 1942 and J.K. McDermott died of a heart attack in 1945 at age 79. J.K. was a charter member of the London Rotary Club and was an active executive of the Red Cross. He was a prominent member of the Talbot Street Baptist Church and deeded his property to the congregation where the First Baptist Church now stands in London. John Gordon McDermott became president in 1946 and ran the company until his death in 1953. Under the able leadership of the new president, Frank Pileghi, the company flourished in the late 1950s. In 1958, a licensing agreement was arranged with a manufacturer in Brooklyn, New York, which dramatically increased the future potential of OPG Company. Subsequent to this, in 1961, Frank Leahy purchased a company from the McDermott estate. About this time, another licensing agreement was signed with a large candy company located in St. Louis, Missouri. These two licensing arrangements, which still exist today, allowed OPG Company to manufacture and market the products of these two firms in Canada. Immediately, new products became available to the Canadian market which substantially increased the company's sales volume, allowing for more efficient manufacturing and marketing techniques. In 1958, after the OPG company entered into a marketing agreement with the Tops Company of the United States, OPG promoted annual trading card sets in Canada. Popular with kids, the standard packs included a stick of bubblegum with a stack of picture cards. In that first year, OPG helped produce Hockey 1957 for the NHL and Football 1958 for the CFL. In the 1960s, OPG and Tops worked closely together to produce sports and entertainment sets. The three sports promoted by OPG were baseball, gridiron football and ice hockey. Starting in 1961, the printing and production for these cards was moved to the OPG headquarters in London, Ontario, Canada. Those first Canadian sets were the 1961 CFL and 1961 NHL sets. While those two sets were unique to the Canadian marketplace, the hockey series did compete against the party's hockey series up until 1963. Starting in 1965, parts or sometimes all of the top baseball Major League Baseball series was produced as an OPG series in Canada. In the early 1960s, Beatlemania overtook North America, with OPG Company having the rights to manufacture and market the Beatle bubble gum cards for the Canadian market. In 1964, OPG produced four very popular entertainment card series featuring the Beatles. Up until 1967, the annual OPG also known as Tops Hockey Series was produced in Canada. After an American Tops Test Series was produced in the summer of 1967, OPG and Tops produced two annual hockey sets from 1968 onwards. The hockey double and OPG set in Canada and the Tops set in the United States coincided with the NHL 1967 expansion from 6 to 12 teams. So while the 1967 series highlighted a 6-team NHL, the two 1968 series highlighted a 12-team NHL of note, the top set would often be released first, but would include fewer cards than the OPG series. Also of interest, the card backs were primarily written by tops, but the OPG card backs added a French translation. In 1970, due to Canadian federal legislation, OPG was compelled to add French language text to the backs of its baseball cards. It also happened to be the year after the Montreal Expos began to play in the majority francophone province of Quebec. 
the practice of making bilingual cards had already been established for hockey. While OPG baseball sets were typically smaller than their tops counterparts, its hockey sets for the Canadian market were larger. OPG also occasionally produced independent card sets of particular interest to Canadian collectors, such as one for the 1973 centennial of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. In the 1970s, OPG's last CFL set was produced in 1972. After World Hockey Association cards were first featured in the 1972 hockey series, an annual WA series was produced from 1974 through 1977. Apart from sports card, the company also produced movie and television spin-off cards such as Happy Days, Charlie's Angels and Superman. From 1977 to 1989, OPG produced cards based on popular motion pictures including Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi E.T. and Batman Returns. In the 1980s, OPG and Tops produced annual album and sticker series for hockey and baseball with the stickers produced by Panini. The stickers were so popular that Tops neglected to produce a hockey card series in either 1982 or 1983. In fact, the stickers were so popular that by 1987, Panini had obtained its own license to PR. The 1994 Major League Baseball strike and 1994 National Hockey League lockout and the accompanying damage to the baseball card industry hit OPG particularly hard. The company announced that it would leave the card business and refocus its efforts on candy. However, a number of changing circumstances kept them in the car business, as well as candy. The 1994 hockey season was the last for OPG as a full company, though the Topps marketing arrangement kept the name alive. In 1996, OPG was bought by the Nestle Corporation. In 1995, Topps included OPG cards in its signature product as a parallel set. It did the same in 1998 when it returned to the NHL market after a two-year hiatus. Later that year, OPG was reintroduced fully, as Topps used the company name for its chrome set. One year later, OPG once again had a base brand set. After Mr. Corrine sold his company, he kept the OPG brand name alive in the card collecting market through licenses with the Topps and Upper Deck companies. From 1996 through 2004, the OPG name was used under license by Tops. Since 2007, the OPG name has been known by the Upper Deck Company. OPG cards continue to be produced through the 2003 hockey season. Prior to the start of the 2004 season, the NHL and NHLP did not renew hockey card licenses with the Tops Company as well as in the game or Pacific trading cards. Instead, the hockey market entered an exclusive five-year agreement with the Upper Deck Company to produce licensed NHL cards. In 2006, Upper Deck entered into an agreement with OPG to revive the OPG brand. Upper Deck's initial OPG hockey product was released during the 2006 season. Upper Deck lost its Major League Baseball license in 2010. They continued to use the OPG brand for ice hockey. Vintage OPG cards are much sought after today for their market value, and cards for popular players command high prices.